All of the incomplete methods we've discussed for identifying Nash equilibria share the underlying structure of a local search algorithm, where we start from some arbitrary profile and then iteratively update that profile in a way that we hope will push it towards a Nash equilibrium. We might restart many times from different initial profiles to build a set of candidate equilibria, and then we'll compute regrets to filter those candidates down to a collection of actual epsilon Nash equilibria. And within this class of algorithms, we'd be remiss not to consider the most popular local search technique. Gradient descent appears all over the place in artificial intelligence and machine learning, as well as many other contexts within math and computer science. The core idea of gradient descent is that to minimize a continuous differentiable function, we can take small steps downhill by moving in the direction opposite the gradient. From multivariable calculus, we know that a function's gradient always points in the direction of steepest local increase. And that means if we evaluate the gradient at some input point, and then take a small step in the direction the gradient is pointing, the output of the function will usually increase. And likewise, a small step in the opposite direction given by minus the gradient vector will usually cause the function to decrease. And this leads us to a generic algorithm for finding a function's local minima, where we can start from some arbitrary input point, calculate the gradient of the function at that point, take a small step in the minus gradient direction to get a new input point, and then repeat. And as long as we choose an appropriate step size, iterating this update should push us downhill until the function flattens out, at which point we will often have found a local minimum. There are certainly some complications that arise in higher dimensions from saddle points and other weird topologies, but gradient descent and its variants have been very thoroughly studied and optimized because of their importance in training neural networks. So if we want to use gradient descent to calculate Nash equilibria, we need to identify some function that we can differentiate and whose minima correspond to Nash equilibria. And the clear choice for our purposes is the total gain function which we define as a sum of all of the individual action gains. This action gain is the same one we've seen before in the context of the Nash advantage function and the regret matching algorithm, and it tells us how much better a player could do if they deviated to some action instead of sticking with the mixed strategy profile. And to get the total gain, we just sum this up over all of the players and all of their actions. Which gives us a function that takes a mixed strategy profile as input and outputs a single number. And that output can never be negative because each of the individual action gains gets floored at zero. And the only way for the total gain to be zero is if all of the individual action gains are zero, and that would mean that from this profile there are no beneficial deviations. So for any profile where total gain is zero, that profile must be a Nash equilibrium. And then since the global minima of the gain function correspond to Nash equilibria, we can try to minimize this gain function as a way of searching for Nash. And if we can calculate the gradient of the gain function, then we can do that minimization using gradient descent. So what does the gradient of total gain look like? Well, the input to the gain function is a profile specifying a probability for every action of every player. And so the gradient is a vector of the same dimension as that input, where each entry is the partial derivative of the gain with respect to that probability. 
this partial derivative tells us how much a small change in a particular probability would change the sum of gains. So if we can calculate these partial derivatives, we can assemble them all into a gradient vector that we can use to perform gradient descent. And so the question now becomes, can we calculate these partial derivatives? Well, if we took the derivative of the total gain, since total gain is a sum over action gains, we can move the derivative inside those sums. But then the action gains are differences in expected utilities. And those expected utilities come from deviation payoff calculations, where we sum up utilities from the payoff matrix times the probability of those outcomes being realized. And those probabilities are a product over the probabilities from the mixed strategy that were the elements of our input vector. So because the total gain is calculated by sums and products of constants and the variables making up our input vector, it's entirely possible to work out how to carry these derivatives through all of those calculations and come up with an explicit formula to compute these partial derivatives at any given profile. And then once we calculate the partial derivatives, we can assemble them into the gradient vector and perform gradient descent. The rest of this right-hand column on the board sketches a derivation of how you could calculate these partial derivatives. But unless you need to write optimally efficient code, the details aren't all that interesting. If that were your goal, calculating the partial derivative of the deviation payoffs with respect to the various probabilities is the key step, because those deviation derivatives come up both when we're differentiating the deviation payoff and when we're calculating the derivative of the profile's expected utility. But for our purposes, it suffices to convince ourselves that the total gain function is differentiable. And then we can hand the actual calculation off to an automatic differentiation library. So if we can calculate the gradient of total gain, then we can take a step in the minus gradient direction. And we do that by subtracting a multiple of this gradient vector from the profile vector and that multiple lambda controls how big of a step we'll be taking. But if we take a profile vector and subtract some other vector from it, there's no guarantee that the resulting vector is a valid mixed strategy profile. It's entirely possible that our profile from the previous step had some very small or zero probabilities, and then the partial derivative in that dimension was positive. So when we subtract the gradient, we'll get a negative probability in that dimension. And it's extremely likely that when we subtract this other vector, the individual mixed strategies for each player will no longer sum to one. So after taking our gradient descent step, we need to project that profile back onto the simplitope. This projection is similar to, but slightly more complicated than, the normalization step that we saw in other algorithms like replicator dynamics. But overall, our gradient descent update will first calculate the gradient of total gain at the current mixed strategy profile in the game that we're solving. Then it will subtract some small multiple of the gradient from the profile and project the resulting profile back onto the simplitope, giving us a new profile that we can use in the next iteration. And now we can plug this update into our local search algorithm and run it for many iterations. But just like all of our other local searches, gradient descent is not a complete algorithm. It's not guaranteed to find us a Nash equilibrium, since gradient descent will often get stuck in a local minimum or otherwise fail to converge.
but just like our other local search algorithms, if we restart it from many different profiles, there's a good chance that at least one of those searches will find an epsilon Nash equilibrium.